Hi, this is Grid Happens, and I'm Mindy Winging Stearns. Oh. I am no. <laughs> to know him, to know you. He's a CEO, entrepreneur, outlier, overcomer, father, brother, underdog. I'm talking about my husband, Glenn Stearns, and you're listening to Grid Happens. <gasps> There we go. Rubbing there we out go. Legs, kicking a little howl. That's right. That's your underdog howl. Howdy, folks. Howl at the moon. Hi, honey. It's you and me again. That's right. It's another episode of Glendy. That's right. I just came back from Montana. Oh, yeah? Where you I'm, feeling like a cowboy? I was. Yes. Yeah. Got on a horse. Yep. Oh, you almost fell off the horse. I did not. Oh I, my God! I was not going there. I, I didn't even think about that. Please I was don't not, start this off I this way. I was videotaping this going, amazing thing, and all of a sudden I was you started talking going, about being a man. And everybody <laughs> says, "Oh my God!" I think he <laughs> fell for twelve seconds. He was going off the horse, off the horse, I off thought the you're horse, supposed and I to thought ride. he was going to die. So I didn't film, and there you ended up on the. I've got, uh, uh, yeah, the video is hilarious, <sighs> but I missed the money shot. You did. Sorry, it's okay. But all I meant. By that oh, were you trying to say what a man you were? Uh, by a man. I got oh. a gun on my hip. <laughs> I'm on my horse. He fell off I'm Wearing his horse. cowboy boots. I'm going to take this horse down the old damn road. I'm going to fall till I cause I'm so damn old. <laughs> it did fall slow, but that's okay. Come on. I was just ta- well, We had a wonderful time out I'm there. I'm slow falling. Are you doing this again? <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a long show. No, it's not. No, it's not. We're, no, we're we, doing Glendy. We're, we are. Short and sweet. Like yes, you. Thank you. <laughs> God. <laughs> Can we just extend this show? You want some you want some lifts? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> just can't help it. Don't go there. We be talking about your ass in five more seconds now. Know that I won't stop then. <laughs> Because you like big butts and you cannot lie. lie. (laughs) You have a wonderful ass, my dear. I know. I know. But you started, so I'm just had to think of something to hurt you back. (laughs) Doesn't hurt. There's a lot of padding. (laughs) It doesn't hurt. So come on, we gotta get to the meme. I'm sorry, it's so fun. You're fun. We're fun. Okay. So we've got some questions from our audience, people that have been listening, and there's some people are interested to know, um, you know, because you obviously did a little show and it kind of showed you was kind of successful. And uh, you know, you've done a lot. You have very admirable qualities and Thank traits. You. And I um, must have put up with you. <laughs> you just do. What a wow, you need a medal. Okay. <laughs> Instead of a sharp poke in the eye, which I'm about to give you. All right, so interesting, like, doing this show, you've done a show before, and here's something that I admire about you, which is different, because I am a little bit of a softy, and criticism kind of, ouch, it kind of stings, but you know what I've seen about you? What? You, like, t- it almost, it's like it energizes you. You have told me about stories your whole life where you've almost gone to blows with somebody, and then the next thing you know, you're, like, swigging a beer and you're best friends. Like, there have been times... When you have, like, it's like you don't mind the negative and the naysayers and those people that have, well, like, they're, and they're, they're out there. They're, I mean, how do you They deal say with there's them? a fine line between love and hate, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So I've always believed that my whole life. And, you know, there are so many, you know, I think when people are talking about you, they're, they care, right? Yeah. And they care either in a positive or a negative light. But there's a very fine line between switching them one way or the other, by the way. And so I found that as an opportunity always to um, to engage and to try to win, win more friends. I mean, there are times, and you know of many, when people have attacked, so to speak, us um, in different capacities, uh, capacities sure. you know, one, and I, I hope this lady is listening, um, had some um, very uh, hurtful to you things. And, and, and what happened is we realized she was hurting and she's become a very dear friend, mm-hmm. right? And it because what happened is I think a lot of people would um, maybe get offended by it and then you bark back and we didn't. We said we're very sorry about our message on Facebook or whatever the heck it was at the time. This is years ago. And yet the reality is, you know, hurt people hurt sometimes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And when you 
embrace somebody that maybe says things that you don't like, it, it takes them back. Then they think, wow, um, maybe that person is bigger than I, I thought they were. And then you can you can flip them, you know, mm -hmm. and then they can become dear friends. So you're right. I've had a lot of my friends, my best friends, came from when we went to blows, you know, <laughs> and... You guys have beaten the crap out of each other in your lives. Like, you really have. Well, you know, there's, I mean, if you can expand a little bit on, like, what do you think it is? Is it a position someone has to take to be, to, to you know, develop a thick skin? Did you always have it? No. I mean, criticism, it's hurtful. People say hurtful things to get a response. But for some reason, you know, you have. But why do you take that and <clears throat> make it about you? You know, if someone says something why not look and say, I wonder what happened in their life that they have this anger or they have this wall around them, you know, because mm -hmm. it's about them on how mm -hmm. they react. And I'm know, thinking of a time when you like this wasn't a naysayer, but this was someone who came at you very like when you had your small children and were parked and you were trying to put the car seat in and you had a parking attendant that got really nasty with you. Right. And was very hard line. And you just, you snapped. You'd been... Well, that was a bad time. That's like one that I, I'm not real proud of. But yeah, I did. I stood up and said, what happened in your life? Why are you so negative? Tell me what happened in your life. Knowing I can't break a parking lady. She's been, she gets, you know, in fights <laughs> every minute. Parking attendants are cut from a different cloth. Yes. And so I asked her point blank, you tell me what happened in your life that you're this way. And she sat there and started crying, said, I don't know. And I hugged her in the middle of the road, Aww. apologizing for after she yelled at me, I kind of gave it back to her. But I didn't give it back to her and call her bad name. She took that all every day. Right. I just said, why are you the way you are? Struck a card. Cord. I probably you did. And I felt it. horrible for doing that. But it broke through, though. It made a, it made yeah, a beautiful moment. Yeah, we sat and hugged in the middle of the thing. She'd still give you a ticket? Damn right she did. <laughs> 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 but I accepted it and said thank and you. And now she's in therapy, <laughs> working through her demons. Yeah. Um. So, well, I mean, when you did that show, when we did that show, Gilligan's Island, I remember we kind of like it, there was kind of this comedy, just going through some of the comments. Right. And there was there were some naysayers on there that just didn't yeah, you know, but mostly I think, um, you know, there were some naysayers, but but mostly people were very nice and. But I think you never please everybody. And I remember one time we had a party. This has nothing to do with that, but I'll get back to that because I just thought of a good, funny <laughs> point. But um, we had a party, and then we had the comment cards and um, because it was for a group that we uh, were with. You were the education chair. And That's were, right. Yeah. And um, one person said it was too cold. Another person said it was too warm. And you're like, how do you please that, per that, that group, you know, when there's people on both right. sides? So you're never going to please everybody. And if you're okay with that, you get over that, then you just move on. If you think about it, just to expand on that a little bit, if you think about life, and we all come from different, like a different context, the way we see the world through your your beliefs, your opinions, your truth, your attitudes. How you were raised. So right. we all have these, these lenses which we see the world. And you could be in a room of 100 people, and there's one speaker on stage, one leader, one representative, whoever it is, and they say one thing, and all 100 people take it differently. Yep. Every single person. It's not personal. It's just you right. taking it the way you see the world. So, and so to your point, I've always <clears throat> looked at it that way. And I thought, I'm not going to take it personal that this person grew up, you know, in the South, and this person grew up in the North, and this person sees me this way and the other person sees me that way but i did like reading reading the comments <laughs> and i remember <laughs> one time you know uh I, we would get comments all the time you know about oh glenn and mindy this and that and everything and i remember one comment was from a actually a um a gay chat group mm -hmm. and they said that glenn he's kind of cute oh look at you Ooh. and they said but he's a little pudgy I went, Ooh, <laughs> that hurt <laughs> <laughs> but it was the truth. Ow. Yeah, I know. I was like, man, I got to lose some weight. Oh, we lost Damn. weight on that show. That yeah. was, those were the days. But no, it's fun to listen to people, and and you do get a lot of truth, you know, and uh, of what of their perspective, mm -hmm. right? And you can choose to, you know, 
use it. You can choose to, you know, ignore it or whatever. And so when people have come on, when we did the last little show here for Discovery, um, I chose not to really dig into the weeds. I mean, you would get upset about all the people, you know, and th there's 99% of the comments were very positive comments. Mm -hmm. And then there are people out there that would say stuff and you would you read them to me and I would just laugh. I didn't care. I still don't. Actually, I, I take it as a compliment. You, that, yes, I can say anything and you're just going to off your back. <laughs> oh, no, not. Let's 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 <laughs> let let that one die, dear. <laughs> okay, yeah, it depends on who it's coming from, right? Yeah. So anyway, the topic, like, how do you turn rivals into revenue? Like, if you think about like what you're doing in this business, how do you differentiate differ, differentiate you from other businesses when you're offering the same similar services? And how do you? How bring... did you get from 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 that to that? What? The topic to the next. This topic. Which topic? What topic are we on? What do you mean? We're talking about um, naysayers. Is that what we're rivals? About? Yeah. <laughs> you just, Earth you the Glen. Earth the Glen. How about A D F and D <laughs> or what? Is it? A D D. Whatever the words are. I don't even know the alphabet. The letters are. Okay, dyslexia. <laughs> I have D A A. Yes. So all right, let me tell you what I think you're trying to say. But all right, and that is <laughs> that. Why do you still not? No, it had nothing to do with what the heck we were talking about. Rivals and revenue. <laughs> we were talking about the naysayers. You were talking about the show. Uh, what? No, I was talking about everything. Life. Okay. Man, we need to have a schedule. <laughs> I do. We... It's right here. Rivals and revenue. How do you deal with naysayers and how can you differentiate yourself from other businesses when you're offering well, was a good transition because I just fell right into that one. So um, what I would say is that the one thing I think that's important in business, folks, since this is a business show, right? Okay, okay, is that you take your competition, you look at them, and you try to embrace them. You try to see what they're doing, and you try to learn from them. You don't try to go up against them, and we're going to beat them and crush them and all those other things, because that sounds good, and it sounds like, you know... Wall Street, and it sounds like all these other business movies that you saw when you were 12 years old, but it's just not smart. What's smart is to go find all the people doing the same thing you're doing and saying, how can I do this more efficiently? Yeah. How can I utilize your infrastructure? And how can we all win? How can we all rise? How can we all rise? All ships rise on a rising tide. How can we rise? So how you do it is you, you don't compete where you're going to beat each other over the head you get together and you say what is it that you're doing that i could learn from and let me tell you these are the things i'm doing that maybe you can learn from so it's about sharing and it's about it's about not feeling afraid to give your competition this secret because there isn't a lot of secrets in most businesses there really isn't you know, people go and, and go to the next shop and they say, this is how we did it over here. So just sit with the owner well, and get together. that's what competition is. I think competition is healthy. I mean, it's a healthy thing. It's what makes people strive to be better. I mean, you look at football teams. They watch they watch tapes on the other teams and they want to figure out how they're running plays so they can all be better. You want to learn from your rivals, right. learn from your competition. And there was a great line in the movie Rush with uh, James Hunt and Nicky Lauda. And he was like, when James Hunt gave up, it was Nikki Lauda was like, you make racing everything like you. I like the competition. Don't give up. Like, why are you giving up? He was so I mean, it was such a profound line about competition and and how healthy that is and how good, healthy right. competition makes us all strive to be better. So w w what I heard you say, I think, is when you have two football teams, you don't really necessarily need to know the other guy's playbook. Right. And so you can cheat to know that he's going to do, you know, right. a pass and then you can just pick it off. It's that you become, you work out harder, you get stronger and you try to make sure your game is up to the same level that their game is. Right. You don't have to cheat to do that. So you can, there's nothing wrong with going and saying, well, what are you working out with? What kind, you know, what kind of, and if everybody all gets stronger, then the whole organization gets better. You see better plays, you see mm -hmm. a lot of things. And in business, you know, if we can 
get to a place where, you know, we're utilizing each other's, um, you know, infrastructure or, you you know, I, I, th- I keep saying that because I think about what I'm doing right now, which was I took our lending company and I went to a friend and said, maybe we can share back end resources. Mm-hmm. Won't that be a better way to deal a with a friend and someone who was competition early uh, on? Right. Yeah, exactly. It's my point is. But but I don't have a problem if my if they're not going to go after my customer, what they're going to do is just we're going to share accounting and human resources and, you know, different things in the back end. I.T. that has nothing to do with, you know, lending and the, the and that side of it. But it's just necessary, you know, behind the scenes things that you need to do to run a business. Well, if we can drive that cost down together we'll both be better off, right? Mm -hmm. And it seems to, you know, work. Here's something I found I loved and admired about you early on when I, when I first came into your life and I, you guys used to have a newsletter in uh, your company at the time, back when you were first Pacific or Stearns and you, you, you would, when people had to leave, people leave for different reasons. They exit because life changes. Something looks, grass looks greener. There might be another opportunity or just whatever, for whatever reason. But you would, literally walk them out and shake their hand and say thank you you know if it changes or take them in front of the whole company and say you know mark's leaving he's yeah. been with us 10 years i want all of us to give him a round of applause and thank him as he walks out the door yeah and i think you know it's important to show your appreciation for people who put time who and put energy time into and energy. your your vision that's right whether or not it's right for them now timing is everything but you would have a newsletter you said that you would put out that because a lot of people would go find out the pasture wasn't always greener and they'd come back and you'd well, have, you a have an open said, door then right you say he's back she's back they're back that was your newsletter well heading. that was one little part of it that where newsletter. yeah it would either be he's back and you know or she's back or they're back you know but that would be this the little column he's back she's back they're back and um because what i noticed most of the competition does is what they'll end up doing is they close that door you leave here you're the enemy right you're going to bring loans and you're going to bring business and you're going to do this for somebody else you're not my friend anymore well i think that's ridiculous right there why can't i liked people before they work for me i liked them when they work for me and i like them when they leave i mean why are you going to be a different person just because they're going to go take their career somewhere else. And so when people did leave and people do shut the door, what are they going to do? You know what? The grass wasn't so green. I can't go back to the old company. They didn't appreciate me. They slammed the door Well, we left it open and appreciated them. And, and it, you know, it really helped. And then also when people came back, it helped validate to the people that were on the fence going, eh, maybe it's not so good over there. Maybe the grass isn't as green as Mm -hmm. we thought. And so, you know, it just seems to make sense. Why do you want to retrain people over and over again for a job? Why not just make so people happy? So you're speaking happy? from a perspective of an owner. As an employee also, I I mean, I had a situation where I had had an t- opportunity in television, and then I got another opportunity that was like a, at the time was a smart move. And then, but when I left the other one, I sent thank you letters to everyone who had mentored me in the process at the the original place and thanked them for the time. I was so grateful for what they gave me, the opportunity, and the timing wasn't right. So when the opportunity for me to come back to my original job, we had left on good terms. So I, you know, there was no like, you know, it was just I think how you exit says more about you, and right. I think that's an important and, aspect uh, of a lot of things in life. How you exit is is a character and uh, i think you had a friend that was in a similar business and when they were um when they were leaving i think they were working in radio and then they went to television that um the people cut them off didn't let them even have an opportunity to say goodbye to their listeners and um you know when you think about that type of management right Mm-hmm. It's scared. It runs th- with fear, mm-hmm. and it's thinking we're going to look bad if someone quits. Well, if they're not there the next day, everybody knows they're gone. Yeah. So why don't you give them the opportunity? And Just that's how goodbye. a lot of people come back. 
they a lot of people work that way. We're going to look bad. It's a reflection on management. You know, it's a reflection on management if you let that person have the opportunity to say, thank you so much. I'm going to move on. And you, that, that's confidence in management when you know, hey, we're a great company. They're going to go try to do something different or whatever. More power to them. Mm-hmm. And that's just human nature. It's people to either live in fear or live in confidence. You know? <clears throat> Excuse me. I think that says, um, I think in many things in how you leave, it just in relationships, in in right deals that go bad. And, well, look at, and look at talk about relationships. I mean, you know, at, at a, my induction ceremony in Horatio Alger, we had um, the mother of my daughter, who's now 41, there, and her husband. We had my ex-wife and my three boys and we had your mom and dad. I mean, we had all three baby mamas. We all three had baby mamas and ki- everybody <laughs> kids there. and everybody. Everyone was there, but Jerry Springer. <laughs> it's like Christmas. Right. No Jerry Springer. And well, you know, you um, and obviously the. I would love to get into a whole episode down the line uh, with Amber and the mother of your yeah, children, I and maybe even great. Kathy. I mean, we have maintained a really nice dialogue over the years and it's not it's not perfect because you know blending a family is a difficult task and divorces there's pain and there's things that that happen that you know there's wounds that need healing and sometimes a little time and passes we were able to navigate an amber came to our wedding amber was at our wedding amber Amber, traveled the world with us she's the godmother to our two little children and uh, she's an incredible woman with her own path and a great life. And it wasn't me or her, but it was really both of us who stepped up and said, there are kids in this picture. And if we can get over our own personal feelings and we look at the greater picture that this is a family that we're all part of. And again, back to your feeling that you can't do anything about it. You know, you can't do anything about the past so you can create your own future. Um, We made choices. I reached out. We had dialogue. I just, you know, said early on, look, I'm not here to replace you as a mother. I respect her position as she was the mother before I got here. And I am not coming into this picture to be the boy's mom. And I made it very clear. I am here to support you and Glenn in making the right decisions for your children. I am a sounding board and I'm merely here to support your decisions. And I made that clear early on. Like I'm I'm not here to, I'm to be the best mom. I'm going to be the new mom. I'm the new wife. You know, it just, they're and thankfully she is a woman of great um, character and was open. And, you know, we got past that and we both wanted to raise healthy, young. You know, I mean, we're only in control of you, right? right? We we don't, we're not in control of other people. No, I I mean, she could have been very hostile. She could have been very, so that she wasn't. It's, it's worked because all sides you were a very big part of that and in, in, in leading that but um you know there's a lot of families out there that would love that but they're only in control of themselves right um but what we all did every one of us is put the kids first what you know life is not about it going in a perfect straight line life is what do you do when things don't go the way you plan them who are you then and i think when we all looked at what we want to teach our children, it was that, you know, this is a very important part of life. It's that, okay, we didn't expect to be in this blended family, but how are we going to do it? And, you know, I don't think our kids even realize that they aren't from the same. <laughs> They're you know. sisters and brothers. That's and they right. They are very, very close. So we're very fortunate that and it's not always the case and it wasn't always easy so i don't want anyone to get any kind of illusion that oh it was a cakewalk and everything was great like we we had challenges we talked through them there was heated moments and then we would you know usually i would call and be like talk to me (laughs) because sometimes you're not so easy to deal with and she and i ganged up on you a little bit when we were traveling (laughs) a little bit you're intense. You can be intense and you get, you know, passionate about things, but that gives you the strength to move on and it's it's worked for you and served you in many areas. I so. I am who I am. I I wear it on my sleeve. Always yes. have, always will. Yes. And I'm, you know, yeah, right. Maybe the word's passion, I don't know. Passionate, right. intense, 
And yeah. Uh, yeah, those are good things. And our kids have some of those traits. So, I mean, we all have an Achilles heel. We all have things that um, we're not proud of and, and, and shortcomings that I feel I could be better at. And I think you make me a better person. I think I make you a better person. I think we both add we're the sum of our parts, you know. So Yep, I'll give you that. So you will? Oh thanks. So I'll give generous you that. of you. So generous. <laughs> I think this has been good. These are good. I know These I've been biting good. my tongue this whole What you have been? Why? Because yeah, I just don't want any any uh I don't want to go off the rails this time. <laughs> I'm cont- I'm trying to stay on par and have a professional iPod. I mean, a uh, <laughs> podcast. iPod. What the heck is that word? iPod. But a professional. Hey, hello, 90s. A professional. Throwing it back. What's professional? We're Glendy. We're combined. We're right, like a, some of our parts. Glendy, I got you, babe. Oh. All right. It's time to wrap up. This has been another great, fabulous episode of Grit Happens, don't you think? No, don't just go so fast. What? What do you want? Slow it down. Slow it down. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Barry White coming to you. Don't you look sexy. over at that producer over there who's telling you to wrap it. I see what's <laughs> happening in this room. I'm I am I am the king of the room. Oh Lord, look at I look, am. look look at you. She, she just told king. me to look at the damn camera too. Okay, so she's telling her to wrap Glendy. up. She's telling me to look at you. Glendy. She's doing all this stuff behind King the scenes. Glenn. But I'm in control, Your folks. Highness. I'm always in control. As long as I, I am, let you think you're yes, in control, things go very well. I am well. in control, and she allows it to happen <laughs> that way. <laughs> Who wears the pants? Who wears the That's pants? That's right. All right, let's go back. Come on, go okay. back. to I, It was going so well. We were so professional again. Back to what we were talking about. I'm not letting this producer... Tell me what to do. <laughs> I'm just, what are you talking about? Oh, wait, she was supposed to do that. No. Did you have more to say? Not really. Okay. <laughs> he just wants to have the last word. Yes. Do you want to like to, just to take us out? Yes, I want to take you out. Okay, so they, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Glenn Stearns. Yes. I would like to thank my audience. <laughs> <laughs> I won't go there either. All right, I'm sorry. I'm joking. I'm not good at this. I'm the sidekick. I am. <laughs> You're the sunny <laughs> to my share. Almost. Oh, you. We almost got through it. All right. Uh, you've been listening to another episode of. Okay. You can find us on Facebook, on Glenn Stearns, yes. on Instagram. You can follow him everywhere and anywhere. Uh, and please send us your questions. Um, there, are, you know. Whatever. We'll answer your questions on yes. an upcoming episode. We've got more lessons from the warehouse and other Lots things. of lessons. We've got lots of guests. Got, I mean, so many people that we're going to have on here really soon that have um, uh, said that they would love to be on. Good friends of ours. Yes, some um, great friends. I can't wait to have, um, I don't want to say anybody's names, but you know, some really your cool Your good people. friend John Elway said he would come on. Uh, so let's talk to John on. in a future episode. We will. We've got a lot of people that have said that. So we'll have some good, fun conversations with people. Um, thank you for allowing me to have a very professional podcast this time. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> it means a lot to me. Come on. Let's wrap this up. I've been right trying. Way. Oh, my gosh. Let's go. Long on wind. <laughs> yes. She's going to screw it up right at the no, end. No, I'm not. I'm not. I. You've been listening to another episode with my husband, Glenn Stearns, on Grit Happens. There we go. Thanks.